action game on. Got my rods and reels. It's the real deal. No planes on this trip. This time we're taking my Baja rigged Ford F-350 4xy from Los Angeles all the way down the Baja Peninsula to the spectacular East Cape. From the border, this 1100 mile trip is doable in two days, but I always take three days so I can stop at my favorite places along the way to enjoy some photography of the scenery and connect with the culture. If you ever have the chance to do this drive, you will never forget it. After crossing the border at Tijuana, we skipped through town and made our first stop at the beautiful El Marador Lookout. We snap a few pictures, grab some candy, and we're back on the road. And this drive is just not complete without a stop at my favorite taco stand in all of Baja. The best carne asada tacos, the best uh, chiles, they've got this, the amazing salsas. If you want a brain taco, if you want a tongue taco, shrimp tacos, fish tacos, El Pastor, and they make it all. Nice carne asadas? Nice. These are my favorite. This place is rocking. It's literally some of the best tacos in all of Northern Baja. From there, we stop at a few more little towns and scenic sites along the way, and before you know it, we're in East Cape. We're driving up to the beautiful Buena Vista Beach Resort. This week, we are so lucky to be staying with my lifelong friends, the Valdez family. Yeah, nice to have you back. We have set up for you yeah. two days of fishing, one day of diving in Cal Puma, as you know. It's beautiful. Thanks for doing that. We're going to eat like God. <laughs> so we, we have, we're very excited to have you back. So let me get you to your room okay, and let's get great. started. Right on, man. Yeah, the drive is phenomenal. <laughs> this family has owned and operated this Tranquilo little hidden gem for more than 30 years. Called the Jewel of the East Cape, the Buena Vista Resort offers everything you can imagine. With great rooms, amazing food, huge pool and spa, and of course, the great fishing. The setting is quiet, peaceful, and perfect for relaxing and getting away from it all. Their fleet of boats is ready to hook you up with whatever fish you're looking for. From a cruiser for big game fish offshore, or you can book a ponga to target inshore species. They can also hook you up with a fly fishing, surf testing adventure while fishing from four wheelers. Seriously, whatever your fishing fantasy, they have the boats and the people that can make your fishing dreams a reality. IGFA Angler's Digest is brought to you by Mojo Apparel. It's time to get your mojo on by Cobian Footwear. Step into performance, step into quality, step into Cobian. And by the Los Cabos Tourism Board, making sure all your fishing dreams come true. So have a quick breakfast, walk down the dock, because I know these guys want to go out and try to make bait, which is usually an early morning bite here at East Cape. Oh, Captain Juan! I come down not knowing what boat we're going to be on. And I just have a happy smile on my face because here's Juan, the captain, here's Jesus, the mate, and here's Felipe. He put us on the best boat for what we love to do. Oh, it's so good to be back home again, man. This is amazing. I hope we're going to give you a great week and wish you know, for the best. We really hope to go rooster fish fishing. Are they biting? Uh, they're biting. Excellent. We got to get bait first. Yes. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Just here at the East Cape, it's not about this. Uh, billfish or dorado or tuna. We also have a bunch of rockfish, coral fish, from sea bass to snappers to sierras to many, many different options. So the plan today is pretty much dedicate ourselves to an inshore fishery. Exactly, but we have to take advantage of all these structures that we have all along the coast. Yep. Ran about, I don't know, three, four miles down. They got this brand new marina, Cabo Riviera. After seeing plans for many, many years, I'm actually seeing the jetties extended into the Sea of Cortez. And off the ends of those jetties, rocky habitat is gonna be fish. We got these beautiful little sardines and uh, nice oily fish like this. Get some chum going, try to get them out of the rocks. Out here, we'll just get them right under the boat and excited. And we did start seeing some bait, but guess what? Sun was up high enough, that stuff was just not gonna go for us. So, you know, we still have a bag of frozen sardines. So we went down towards Punta Colorado, found some patchery. 
Now we're dedicating a full day to inshore, obviously, because A, the fish taste great, B, we got this beautiful habitat, C, there's a ton of variety. Exactly. But the offshore fishery is what East Cape is known for, and Saturday, there's a tournament. Yeah, we're fishing the Cardinal Tournament. It's uh, one of the local towns here. The purpose of the tournament is to raise funds to fix the kindergarten. So this could be a marlin fishery primarily, right? This tournament is the uh, biggest marlin, biggest dorado, and biggest tuna. And that's okay. It. So. okay. I'm really looking forward to Saturday. So we start shopping and we start seeing a little fish, some triggers, uh, some little bass, and, and suddenly this Ooh, nice five pound, eight pound cabrilla like show up. Looks like leopard gripper. Okay. We're gonna throw the anchor. We anchor up because the wind's starting to blow a little bit and it's just taking us across that reef too fast. We wanna anchor up so we can start dispersing that chum from one location and have them literally come into our chum line where we can present a bait back to them. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Just fly line the dead Dean. All right, good job on that, Jesus. Oh, oh, that's, that's a good one. Very nice. That's a nice one. That is that's what we were parking for. Yep, beautiful. And it was nice to see Felipe catch that leopard group. Unfortunately, not one of the eight pound fish we saw, but hey, a leopard group is a leopard group we decided to keep it for them. But we got a nice little variety of fish there, which was a lot of fun. Got a trigger fish, which we kept for ceviche. Caught a couple of small grouper species. Uh, caught a ladyfish, which is like a, like a tarpon. Too big for a rooster fish? No, we're gonna put it in the tooth. Try it. So we're gonna pin that on, and a big 50, 60 pound rooster fish, we'll eat that for lunch. Oh, <laughs> not that one. <laughs> the breezes start picking up, and that's, that's when I decide, no, you know what, we're, we need to move. So what's the plan, boss? We're gonna head out, try to find some dorado, maybe okay. strike marlin. Okay. Yeah, play around a little bit offshore, and then wait until the, the, the breeze goes away so we can fish uh, here on the beach. And there's some really fishy areas right out here, not far. Right, not far, two miles, three miles at the most. Yeah, two, three miles. We're in Stripe Marlin, Dorado territory. Go out there, see if we can't raise something. Let this wind settle down. Come back in the afternoon and see what we can do. I like it. The south winds have picked up and made us change our plans. So we're heading offshore to see if we can cross paths with some big fish. As soon as we start trolling, Less than a mile from shore, we got the first wahoo bite. Unreal, a wahoo just jumped off that teaser. And then shortly thereafter, we got a striped marlin came up. Didn't eat anything, came up, made a pass, fluffed off. I thought, that's pretty cool. We saw a wahoo, we saw a striped marlin. This could be a really cool day. And I think it was five, 10 minutes after that, we got a, we got a Dorado hook up. Dorado? Good fish, too. Sizable fish started jumping around back there, and I thought my first call was, that's a 20 to 25 pound fish, looks good. But as they got closer and started doing some head shakes and kind of greyhounding, I realized the thickness of that body and think, nah, it's gotta have like five more pounds than that. It's gonna be a 25 to 30 pound fish. Beautiful, good thing. It is, bigger than I thought. This one right now. We brought the big bull in, and as it sat on the deck, I thought, that's a 28 pound fish. Let's all, let's wager some bets. Talk to me. 28.11. Beautiful. Oh yeah, that's the fanatic moment right there, baby. From the water to your wall, right there. So we put that in the box because we know we're gonna bring that home and eat. Put the lines back out. 10 minutes later, bap, another Dorado hookup. Same lure, that beautiful green Dorado pattern, high five. Woo! One more, guys. That's it. That feel pretty good. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. Are you kidding me? That's 20, 22. 20, 20, 22. All in about 15 minutes. Two for two, Philippe. There you go. Good so as the wind started dying out there, that south wind was starting to die off, we thought to ourselves, we might find great conditions back inshore to get another grouper or maybe a snapper on the remaining sardines we had. Start throwing out some of that chum, put out two, just fly line these dead baits, let them drift down into that current. And sure enough, the line goes off. But he's fighting it, the fish comes around right, comes back around left. Nice! 
Sierra. Yeah, it's a Sierra. How cool is that? Another fine eating fish. And as we talked about on the boat, some of the finest ceviche you can find Good anywhere fish. in America. And we were all excited because we're, now we were going to have a ceviche contest between the trigger fish that we caught in the morning and then, and then now the Sierra. So we're going to have a great dinner. <laughs> Trigger fish is the best. Trigger, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> Today we've taken a short drive over to Cabo Plomo to try our hands on some surf casting, which can really be good here on the East Cape. We're at Punta Arena Lighthouse right now. This is the roosterfish capital of the world. So I mean, we got here like 11.30 this morning. It didn't seem like it was that imperative to get up early to come down here. Best time is noon, one o'clock, two o'clock. <laughs> That's when you get the, the most action. The rooster fish coloration is a very black bodied fish, so it's easy to pick out against this emerald green background. Some fish right here. And you cast in front of them and see if they get interested. If not, we go back to the start. The fish we've seen so far are like 40 to 50 pound roosters. Really good stuff. On this light little fox, I'm gonna have my work cut out for me if I hook up. But the cool thing about this, it's almost like you're in the Florida flats, you know, sight fishing bonefish or permit, but here you're running up and down the beach, getting some great exercise, throwing these poppers, and you know, hoping for that hookup. I lost him. He, I did too. On the wave, I lost him. I think he's in the dark, dark area. Finding some fish, but none that would bite, we decided to meet up with a Cabo Palmo tourism representative for lunch at a great little canteen on the beach. And then we head over to meet up by a longtime friend, Mark Rayer, who's been running this dive shop, Vista Sea Sport, here on the East Cape for the last 20 years. Well, every time I've dove this place, and I've dove for many years with Mark, every time I come down here, I prioritize that dive. You're incredibly lucky as well. <laughs> Whale sharks. Yeah. I mean, every time we jump in, it's like, God, I haven't seen one of those in years. Yeah, I, I try to act like nonchalant about it, like, oh, <laughs> oh, just another whale shark. It just doesn't happen every day, but it happens for Bill. Every time he's here, something spectacular seems to happen. Oh, uh, I'm really stoked you're going to join us today, Axel. I'm, I'm stoked too. All right, well, let's get this thing going, right? Let's go. Uh, the Mexican government declared Cabo Pomo a national marine park in 1995, and it's the only living coral reef in the Sea of Cortez. Actually, it's the only living coral reef in North America on the west coast. It hosts an amazing amount of fish, and since they made it a marine park, the fish just seem to know that they're in protection, and they'll swim right up to you, and it's like the fish are on steroids. They're, the size of the fish and the, the volume of the fish is just an incredible sight. This, there's something about this Cabo Pomo Reef. It's just, it's a photographer's dream. Well, every time I dive this place, I have a great dive. It's tournament day, and we're up bright and early to get on the water and make some bait. We're definitely in this to win this. So we got to the bait guy about six miles north of here, and he had these beautiful ballyhoo, these frozen ballyhoo. And they're huge, they're beautiful. I know we got some great baits to go out there offshore with, and uh, to try to test these marlin. But when we got to the shotgun start, I think we're like two, three minutes late. We just missed the gun going off. We saw all the boats coming out. This is a local tournament, and over 60 boats are participating for prizes for the biggest marlin, dorado, and tuna. The cool thindy is the proceeds are going to the local kindergarten. This is a win-win, with great competition for a great cause. That's a good sign. As we're heading out to where the fish are biting, we see some porpoise jumping and decide to check them out. We're seeing a lot of action around us. There's a lot of dolphins. The water te temperature is great. So we just wait to see if we can get a, a good, a good build fish around here. Awesome. All right? Let's do it too, buddy. Good luck. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. We got our mojo on. <laughs> These are Pacific bottlenose dolphin. Not common to carry tuna very often, but not to say they won't. But the fact that we're seeing them is a really good sign. After a great little dolphin show, but no fish showing up, we switched up the bait and lures as Captain Juan heads towards the area he wants to start fishing. Next thing we know, my cameraman says, 
Right there. See him? Right there. Really, he sees a vent. I'm looking, I don't see it. And as it swings in long left, then I see a shadow coming up long left. Now, didn't need it. Didn't take a swipe. But what we did is we threw that ballyhoo back, thinking it's going to eat this beautiful bait, and it just sauntered off. And we decided to change the pattern just to, to make a few things different and try to, to put some, some other lures. You're on! You're bit! Look at the big Dorado! Okay. Crazy. So we just had another Dorado come out long, and then he saw a Marlin over here. The marlin came over to the lures and then went underneath them. We left them there. A lot of times in East Cape, where you see Dorado, you're going to see Marlin. That valley who's swimming really nice back there. Come on, man. So that first fish, I don't know if that was a Dorado or a Marlin. Because we saw him like that. Yeah. Yeah. Dog, got it, man. Well, at least we're in the zone, right? Yeah, we got in the zone. That's pretty good. While on the hunt for some tournament winning fish, we come up on a fish that makes our day even more interesting. So we put the spread out, and Juan sees a big there, shark. There, there. It's right over here. Thank you. So we go over to the shark, it's this huge hammerhead. I don't know, 10 feet long? Big animal. So we're going over there trying to bait it, see if we can get him to come and you know, play with us a little bit there. Nice. Oh, that's perfect. He's coming on it. He's coming on it. Oh, he just went right by it. He had nothing to do with that ballyhoo. Laying it right out in his track, could care less about it, had no interest at all in it. But right after that, we got jig bit. Dorado? I saw some flying fish getting up. Yeah, big Dorado. Big Dorado? Mom, maybe a marlin. I saw some good color. I saw something go sideways. I think that's a big Dorado. That's a really nice Dorado. This might be like a winning fish in that division. But Juan had a much better advantage, and he saw a marlin. So that fish keeping pressure on it, and it just comes on button. As it's running, it just comes off. Came off, just came off. Woo, that's a good fish. Bummer. Yeah, been a real slow morning, only a few marlin caught. We are literally on the peak of the full moon here. And as much feed as is in the water here, I am certain these marlin have been feeding all night. So if this bite does establish today, it's probably going to be late in the afternoon. And uh, all of a sudden over the radio, one of the boats says, hey, we're finding a bunch of jacks out here, about another five, six miles offshore. He says, these are big jacks, big Jack Ravel, and they're just foaming out here. We said, hey, let's just go over there and just to take a look at it and maybe catch a fish or two. IGFA Angler's Digest is proudly sponsored by Finn Addicts, Fox Travel Rods, Tough Line, Halco Lures, King Sailfish Mounts, and NCMC Wild Oceans. We just got a tip over the radio about some insane Jack Ravel action. Now, even though they're not part of this tournament, we've decided to get a little fun in and catch some fish. Anytime an angler sees boiling fish on the surface of the ocean, especially in those conditions, flat calm, it gets your adrenaline going. This is so wild. So weird seeing a big school of jacks this far out. On my second cast on the popper, bam, I just destroy that popper. 25 pounds jack easily. I must have cast that thing about 20 more times and never got a bite. Meanwhile, he catches another one off that rooster popper. He's bit! Good stuff. So he's got two fish, and I'm still playing around. I'm putting little twisty jigs, I'm fishing foam, I'm fishing plastics. After he caught his third fish on that popper, I thought, you know what? Ixnay on this. Give me the popper. I'm going to catch him. I mean, look at this. This matches nothing out here. But they're eating it. So you know what? Don't ask stupid questions. Just go with what they're eating. We found a fresh batch of these boiling fish. First cast, literally hit them in the head. Second or third uh, tug, zip, hooked up. This is a fresh batch of fish that haven't seen these lures yet, man. We might do some damage. Next thing I know, this fishing rod tip just comes climbing down on my head. He did some, he did some damage all right. Not on purpose. They just... Just to make him clear who was 
who was the boss in the boat, but hey, it worked out very well. <laughs> but I brought that in as our fourth jack. Had a great time with that stuff. And I mean, face it, we're in a tournament for crying out loud. It's time to get back out on it. And so we reestablished the pattern, started heading back towards where the boats were getting bit, and we were back in the game. So we thought we'd give it another hour and a half or so, running around, kind of coming back in from offshore, the zigzag pattern back and forth, back and forth. And about an hour later, Felipe says, there's one right there. Good eyes, Felipe. Caleb going downwind real slow. About a 100 pound stripey. He runs down, grabs that ballyhoo, throws it out to it. Great cast, great presentation, the fish fades. So we do a couple of circles out there. He never raised it back. Esual, the oldest Valdez brother, he's in a boat not far from us. We see him stop. We see him backing down. We see him turning to get position on the fish. They're hooked up right before the end of the tournament. They bring a fish in. We don't know what it is, but they immediately turn the engines and they're hightailing back to the way station. And on the way in, they radio us and said they had a really nice garage. And they ended up winning the tournament. They got to the way station five minutes before the end of the tournament and beat the other Dorado by, I think, 0.4 pounds. Nice job, boys. Nice job. Made us proud, too. Made Buena Vista Resort proud. Anytime you come down here, it's always a great time. The ambiance of the resort, exquisite. The food, excellent. The quality of the boats, phenomenal. The crews, friendly. So it's always a great experience just to be back down here again. And the Valdez family makes you feel like family. I just want to thank the Valdez family. I want to thank Jesus, the mate. I want to thank Juan, the captain of the Alegria, for all the great times they, uh, they put us on this week and uh, all the efforts they made to get us on fish.